I'm Tamil and I grew up in London after my family left Sri Lanka and left the ethnic violence that became the Sri Lankan Civil War. And uh, the body of work that this exhibition is really the culmination of uh, began uh, as a way of kind of processing my relationship to both sides of that conflict through my relationship with art itself and uh, questions of what art does in the world and also how it can be instrumentalized. Uh, so it's really a show of two halves. Uh, one floor of the exhibition looks at um, the ideas of the Tamil revolution and the creative scene of that revolution that was wiped out in 2009. Uh, and then the other floor of the show uh, looks at the contemporary art that uh, has, has flourished on the island since then and, uh, and looks at kind of Sri Lanka's colonial art history. So the exhibition begins on this floor uh, with um, my paintings that kind of channel uh, Sri Lanka's colonial art history. And um, I have a kind of double-edged relationship with painting in that uh, I've been obsessed with the medium for quite a long time, but also terrified of it. And I think that terror for me comes from uh, my childhood when I couldn't speak. I had a debilitating stammer uh, and uh, years of speech therapy didn't help. I couldn't speak until really my late teens um, when I started making stuff. And I think making things somehow gave me the confidence to be able to train myself how to speak. Um, but I had to literally train that. I had to kind of mechanically reverse engineer how this thing that most people do naturally, how that works. Uh, and I started with photography, which was easy for me uh, as a, a kind of mechanical reactive way of, of making things. Um, but since then I've been like, kind of obsessed with painting as this sort of iconic form of self-expression, um, which is also something I've been kind of terrified of. Uh, and um, making a mark with my hand uh, has for a long time filled me with the same sort of totally debilitating terror that I used to get when I opened my mouth to speak and nothing would come out. Uh, and I think in a way a lot of uh, my artistic work uh, has been a way of uh, kind of figuring out workarounds uh, to this kind of fear of self-expression. To compose these paintings, um, I use a neural network that's been pre-trained on all the publicly available data online. And, uh, when it comes to uh, historical images, that's of course dominated by the, the Western canon. On, it's dominated by the kind of art history that was brought to uh, Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, um, a, a century ago by British settlers. Uh, and, um, uh, and then I prompt that neural network with the aggregated work of uh, many of my contemporaries, uh, many of whom are from a generation of, of artists in Sri Lanka that were influenced by that canon. Uh, and the neural network can essentially like, analyze the, the, the patterns uh, behind the images that are prompted with. Um, so it, in a way it can analyze the uh, art historical influences behind the aggregated documentation that I use as a prompt. And, uh, and based on that, um, generate entirely new compositions extrapolated from uh, the work of my contemporaries. Um, but based on, on 
influences behind their work that they might not even be aware of themselves uh, in that the algorithm doesn't care about art history. Uh, it's, uh, it's just statistics. It's just analyzing patterns. Um, so uh, this generates a, a digital file, a PNG, it's a flat image. But of course we, uh, we, we might see texture uh, in that flat image. We might make assumptions about how we would paint it. Uh, and so when uh, that flat image is translated onto canvas, um, uh, in the painting of the picture of that, that digital file, uh, you're making countless micro decisions um, uh, by filtering all of the art historical memes uh, that um, uh, that you're kind of even subliminally aware of, and and that process of, of filtering is maybe not that different to what the algorithms do. This part of the exhibition uh, with my paintings is bisected um, by uh, a video installation from 2019 called Being Human, which kind of looks at the relationship between contemporary art and human rights uh, through the prism of artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, and that work kind of began with the ongoing discussion, argument, debate I've been having uh, with my uncle, uh, who makes a brief appearance in that video. Uh, and he's kind of a family hero. He was the uh, last of our family to leave. Uh, he uh, is a Catholic priest and was headmaster of a school in Jaffna. Uh, and he wanted to stay to protect his students from the Sri Lankan army. Uh, and um, used funding from the Catholic Church to set up and run uh, a human rights center uh, to investigate uh, like government war crimes and um, unsurprisingly the Sri Lankan government didn't really appreciate that so they tried to assassinate him several times and, uh, and um, I've been having this kind of discussion uh, with my uncle about about human rights, which is, you know, the legal framework that's the basis of the work that he's been doing, but uh, is also based on uh, a set of ideas that could be seen as the ideological front line of uh, a value system from the West. Uh, the the ideological front line of an empire, perhaps, um, and uh, and so I've been kind of talking with him about what the particular version of being a human that is concretized in that legal framework, like what that is, where it comes from, and um, and the film also features a cast of. Uh, of, of guests, some of them algorithmically synthesized, are all, all guests of the Colombo Art Biennial, which was founded in the immediate aftermath of the violence that ended the Sri Lankan Civil War. The second part of the exhibition uh, looks at a very different creative scene, uh, which is the art of the Tamil Revolution, the revolution that was wiped out in 2009. I grew up with uh, a number of kind of blind spots in uh, my understanding of the, the Tamil liberation movement. 
um, certain aspects of that revolution that my parents didn't talk about when I was growing up, but that I've since come to find uh, in, incredibly interesting. Um, and that liberation movement was really the first of its kind uh, to embrace the internet. And when Sri Lanka got its first internet service provider in 1995, uh, the Sri Lankan government was censoring all of the media on the island, but didn't know how to censor the internet. Uh, so the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Leelam immediately saw the potential of the World Wide Web, uh, not just to circumvent that censorship, but also to coordinate the Tamil diaspora around the world. What I find quite fascinating about these sort of lost histories uh, is almost um, as, as sci-fi is in that they're a way of glimpsing uh, an alternate possible reality. And I haven't tried to uh, do anything like telling the author authoritative story of that conflict. Um, I think that might be an uh, almost impossible thing to do um, with a, a very divisive conflict where there is no consensus on what happened. Um, but I'm interested in, in telling a, a side of the story that uh, I wasn't told growing up. And, um, and I'm interested in an idea of what it means to be Tamil uh, that isn't based solely on the tragedy of how that conflict ended in 2009, which was brutal and tragic. But I'm interested in an idea of what it means to be Tamil that can also look to the future um, uh, based on some of the things about that uh, that liberation movement that were quite unusual and interesting. So the somewhat immersive uh, film installation, the finesse, uh, features a projection across one wall of Constella Zurich, um, uh, which is made from footage from a very special forest that was planted by the Tamil liberation movement as a sustainable source of timber for the new society that would be built after the end of that war, which never got to be built. Um, and most of this projection, uh, the stuff that we've shot, but some of it is generated because the parts of that forest that are not accessible. They're protected by the Sri Lankan government's task force on archaeology, uh, which a lot of Tamil people see as uh, a way for the government to um, uh, occupy parts of the Tamil homeland um, uh, whilst also refuting uh, historical uh, Tamil claims to that region by kind of weaponizing archaeology. Uh, and uh, this idea of history as always a fiction uh, told by states um, that idea is kind of central to this work and perhaps to the exhibition as a whole. Um, now, parts of this film are uh, algorithmically generated live every time it loops, so it's never the same twice. Uh, and um, some of the people in it are constructed, synthesized, algorithm that is generated. P other parts of the film use kind of found footage um, and there's a kind of like fluidity between uh, between what's constructed and what is real, whatever that means. I witness many stages of the gradual shift towards the abyss. The destruction of an old rule called monarchy. The creation of a new rule called populism. And now the militarization of culture.
part of the exhibition also features a number of works by Arne Anker, Plinth and Weigel, in Karl Larum, uh, painted ceramics, uh, sculptures uh, made from ghillie suits, uh, and a number of masks. Uh, and uh, this project that I'm a part of um, is really about kind of uh, extending the legacy of uh, the uh, the art of the, of that revolution um, by looking at the art history that was kind of wiped out with the end of that war um, and uh, and extrapolating from that these new works that uh, um, are kind of influenced by a very different art historical context to uh, to contemporary art and more related to like Soviet socialist realism and also ancient uh, Sangam like Tamil mythology. One of the people that uh, appears in some of the footage used in uh, the video installation, the finesse that's part of the show, uh, says something that I find quite striking. Uh, she describes reality as the story that empires tell. So fix one, per one particular version of reality is the truth. And, um, and I think that's an idea that a lot of Tamil people uh, kind of really get because uh, we have had to grow up synthesizing very different versions of the same history. And perhaps the show as a whole um, uh, kind of looks at uh, these ideas of how reality can be constructed by states and also the role that art plays in that. And a question that has been sort of central to this exhibition for me is, is the question of how you even tell the story of the losing side of a conflict when it's the winners that write the history. Organizes all the world's information. 